Hello and welcome to the companion video for the useful Terraform Tools blog article on morethancertified.com. Now in this video, we're going to follow along with the blog. And we're going to go over some of the useful CLI tools that come bundled with Terraform. Now, if you'd like to follow along, it'll be best if you have Docker installed. As you can see, I do. And of course, you'll need Terraform installed as well. Now, as you can see, I'm already in an empty directory right here. I'm using Cloud9 for my IDE. Of course, you can use any IDE you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first quick CLI tool I want to cover is Terraform Format or Terraform FMT. So what I'll do is go ahead and create some code. I create a new file, main.tf, and open that. And I'm going to copy directly from the blog post the code that's there. Now as you can see, it's pretty ugly code. We've got some missing indents, things like that. And what this code does is it deploys a Docker image. So let's go ahead and clean this up to make it look a little more presentable. So if I run Terraform init first, just like so, then run Terraform FMT. You can see it added the indentation there for these braces and fixed the over indentation of this provisioner. So that's great, pretty simple, but as you can see, that would make troubleshooting issues a lot easier to follow. Now, of course, also, if you do have more directories and more modules within this directory, you can run Terraform FMT, recursive, and that will cover any nested directories. Okay, so that one's easy enough. So next, let's move over to Terraform Output. So what I'm gonna do there is just go ahead and copy some more code from the blog, paste that in just like so, and what this is going to do is output the image ID from our image. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then what I want to do is just run a Terraform Apply, just like so. And as you can see, we've got our output there, which is great. But if we wanna see that again, we can either run a Terraform refresh, which is especially handy if we were to change this output, which will then just show the new output without us having to reapply. Or we, of course, run Terraform output, just like so. Now, as you can see, this appears to be an object. We can actually access this using JSON and a utility called JQ. So if you don't already have it, go ahead and run sudo apt install jq. As you can see, I already did. And once you're finished with that, we can run terraform output dash json, which as you can see, outputs everything as a json object, but then we can filter on that. So if we run terraform output dash json, pipe that into jq, we then can access based on the values. Now, of course, you can look up this JQ syntax to dive in a little bit deeper. And there you are. So as you can see, we were looking for the image ID dot value, which produces exactly what we want. Now, what we can also do is access that value specifically by filtering on Grafana slash Grafana. And there we are. So now we have the value we're looking for, which of course we could pipe into another utility. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at Terraform Show. So Terraform Show shows us what's in the state currently. Now this doesn't have a ton of information outside of exactly what we might need, which here it just shows us the attributes of our Docker image and the outputs. But if we run a Terraform show dash JSON, you can see there's a lot more information there. And of course it's all as one cluttered object. So let's use JQ once again, pipe that into JQ. That looks a lot better. And as you can see, when you output to JSON, you're getting a little more information than you did before as you're getting all of these null values which this can actually be very helpful when you're trying to construct your resource. This will show you the different options that you have. So let's go ahead and see if we can access that latest ID again. So what we'll do is we will run a Terraform show dash JSON JQ values dot root module dot resources. This is the first resource that was listed values.latest, just like so. And as you can see, we don't need those quotes that we had before. 
So if I scroll this up, you can see we've got values, root module here, the first resource, latest, just like so. So let's go ahead and hit enter there and exactly what we were looking for. Perfect. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make our deployment a little bit more complicated. What we're going to do is add a Docker container resource. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And as you can see, I've hard coded the name and we're referencing the image, the docker image.containerimage.latest. So docker image.containerimage.latest. And as you could see, we have been utilizing that using our previous commands to find that latest. So we know what that's gonna look like. So let's go ahead and apply this. Terraform apply, auto approve. Okay, all done. So now what we want to do is we're gonna use the terraform state command. And now if we just run terraform state, you can see there are several commands here. So we're gonna take a look primarily at list and show. So let's use list first, terraform state list. And there we are. So we have both of our resources that we have deployed. Pretty simple there. So now if we want to see more information about just the container image, we can copy this and run a terraform state show which then requires you to pass in a resource, just like so. And now that displays exactly that resource and nothing else. So that's a great way to access just one resource. Now it's not too hard with our very small deployment here, but if you have hundreds of resources, this is going to save you hours of time digging for information that you need. Now, if you need just the latest, one thing to note about Terraform State Show is it will not output to JSON. So we can just use our old friend grep, just like so. And there we go, we have latest equals right there. All right, so now let's look at some more exciting tools. The next one we wanna look at is Terraform Graph. And what Terraform Graph is going to allow us to do is see the relationship between our resources. Now this can show it either in the CLI or it can show it graphically. We're going to definitely prefer graphically because the CLI is a little difficult to follow. So what we'll do is we're going to hop into our image resource here. And what I wanna do is create an artificial dependency. So right now the Docker container, since it utilizes that container image, is dependent on the Docker image. And what I'm gonna do is make the Docker image depend on the Docker container. So if I do depends on equals Docker container dot app, container just like that, that will create a cycle between these because the Docker image can't be created without the container and the container can't be created without the image. So let's see what that looks like. So if I run a Terraform plan, cycle, just like so. Now, of course, again, this is easy and a little bit contrived since we forced it, but in a Terraform deployment with hundreds of resources, that can become very difficult to troubleshoot. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot that. First, let's run a sudo apt install graph viz. This will allow us to visualize what we're doing. Now I already have it installed. Go ahead and get that installed. And then what we want to do is we're going to use Terraform graph. Now if I just run it by itself, you can see kind of uh, a lot going on here. You've got a diamond, a shape equals diamond. Obviously we're not seeing that. It's just explaining what the shape looks like. So let's go ahead and create that image. So we'll run Terraform graph draw cycles because we need to see those cycles dot dash t pdf and then output that to graph.pdf and you can output this to png and several other formats check out the graph viz documentation for more so now we have the graph.pdf if i open that scroll down here you are here's your cycle so this shows exactly what is dependent on what as you can see we can see all the dependencies here and then we can see that there is a cycle here which causes a major issue. So this really, really becomes useful whenever you are troubleshooting multiple modules and things like that, because you can see which module depends on what, and it can very quickly help you diagnose issues you may not have foreseen. All right, so finally, our last tool here, we're gonna check out the Terraform console. Now Terraform console is probably one of the most useful tools you can use within Terraform. 
and I recommend while developing Terraform, you always keep it in mind because it's going to help you, especially with things like outputs, determine the syntax needed to get to the value you need to see. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So let's say after I comment out this depends on, we definitely don't want that anymore. Let's say that we want to use the second part of our image here. So we've got Grafana slash Grafana, and we want to name this just Grafana. Now, I mean, this isn't a very difficult example. You can probably figure that out, but let's go ahead and take a look in Terraform console on how to test it out beforehand. So if we head into Terraform console, we can then access the Docker image dot container image. As you can see, we have all of our information here. And of course, name, which is what we're going to want to access to get the name here for our container. So if we want to access that, we just do docker image.container image.name, just like so. So now we have that. Now, how are we going to get this second part? Well, we can use the Terraform split function, which is similar to split in most programming languages. So if we use split, we're gonna split on that slash, and we'll do docker image.container image.name, just like so. You can see we have Grafana and Grafana. So if I access the second index, just like so, which is a one here because indexes start at zero because that's the proper way to do things, we get Grafana. Now, of course, this is the same here, but for some, you may have a different registry, but the second part is the container name. And that's what we want is we want the container name. So if I go ahead and copy this, I will add that right here directly. I'm gonna save that file. I'm gonna get out of my console by pressing Control C twice. I'm gonna run Terraform FMT, just like so. That fixes those little indentations. And then I'm gonna run a Terraform apply. Auto approve. Okay, perfect. And then we run a Terraform state list. I'll just copy this here and I'll run a terraform state show grep name, name equals Grafana, just like so. All right, so that is a summary of some very, very important Terraform tools that you should definitely practice with and get to know very intimately. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and whatnot, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.